we're on. Good morning, my friends. It's so nice to see you, to have you join in our celebration service. This morning, we have an opening quote, and it comes from Eric Butterworth, one of my favorite Unity authors. He writes, because you live within the allness of God mind, you are always in the flow of creative and success producing ideas. There is never a limit to the flow. I invite you to join me in our affirmation. I am in the flow and every day I expect new things to happen that will open the way to success. If you're joining us via Facebook, I welcome you and throughout the service, if you'd like to use the comment section, I encourage you to do so. If you're joining us via Zoom, I welcome you and I invite you to mute yourself upon entry. And please stick around after the service so that we might have some connection time, some social time. If you're on Facebook and you'd like to join the Zoom gathering after the service, please do so. The, the Zoom link is found in the email newsletter sent out last week. Okay, I think that's it. Let's begin with prayer, shall we? Ah, let's just take a nice deep breath and just relax as we exhale. Becoming conscious of this now moment, releasing all, any and all anxieties that we may be experiencing any and all fears, worries, or concerns. And just knowing that God is greater than all of this. Whatever concern or burden you may be carrying today, I invite you to say it silently, seeing that God is present, even in the circumstance that you or a loved one may be facing. God is light wisdom, love, prosperity, and God is within each of us. If you have a prayer request and you'd like to share it with the community, I invite you to do so in the comments. And we just know that all the prayer requests, whether they're shared or not, are lifted up here and now in this consciousness of being in the flow this flow of love that we are ever connected to, that we are ever a part of, that runs forever through us as us. And thank you, God. Amen and amen. We have an opening song. And again, if you're con uh, connecting through Zoom, please, please mute yourself before you start singing. Although I would love to hear you sing, it doesn't transfer very well through Zoom. So join me in this wonderful song. a call and response after it gets going, so you don't necessarily have to read the words.
here if you will join me in our uh, statement of welcome and if you can't see the words just allow yourself to um, listen and have them wash over you knowing in your heart that this is our welcome for everyone each of us is created with sacred worth no one exists outside the heart of god in unity we believe god is absolute good and because all people exist within and as part of this divine energy each of us is also inherently good you are welcome here we have the reading of the daily word for november 15th and the word is kindness the word kindness triggers feelings of warmth, connection, and love in my heart. I smile as I recall ways that friends, family members, and others have shown me kindness. I feel again the gratitude and blessing I experienced in those moments. Gratitude, love, and a beautiful awareness of connection fill my heart and mind in a remarkably similar way when I remember the kindnesses I have shared. The movement of electrons through a wire creates a current, a flow. As kindness moves from person to person, it creates a flow of divine love. Both giving and receiving are essential to this current of love. So I look for opportunities to share acts of kindness. I welcome with a grateful heart the kindness others share with me. Our scripture today comes from Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Our affirmation is on the screen, but let me say it one time so that you don't have to worry about reading it. I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. Now let's do that together. I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. Ah, beautiful. We do have a few announcements today. Our Vesper service will be on Zoom at 4 p.m. with Sharon Bousquet. Uh, it, Vespers is an even song, evening song. So it's mainly music with a bit of meditation thrown in as well. And then we'll have a Thanksgiving gathering on Zoom next Sunday at 1 p.m. Giving Tuesday is coming up. And Giving Tuesday is a way to kind of kind of protest the uh, commercialism of the, of the season, the, of Black Friday and Cyber Monday and all of that. It's, a, it's an opportunity to support the nonprofits that you want to see flourish. And if you'd like to see Unity of Hagerstown flourish, I invite you to give over and above your normal tithe and uh, know that your generosity is always appreciated and that you are participating in the law of giving and receiving as you do so. We have our annual congregational meeting. That will be on Zoom as well this year. And that's on the uh, 6th of December, immediately following our service. So please plan on t attending that, especially if you're a member. We're doing a Secret Santa this year. Uh, very little is involved. For the three weeks before Christmas, a small gift or item either to be mailed or dropped off secretly, shh, don't tell anyone, at uh, your name's, your selected name's home, and uh, not to exceed $20, handmade gifts, repurposed gifts, all that is fine. Contact January if you'd like to sign up. I think it's going to be fun. And I think it will, it's a, another way in which we can bring together this community. Our Friday self-awareness class continues. This is the last week of it. We're going to try to cover as much of, of the rest of the book as possible. So if you're participating in that class, you may have a lot of reading to do this week. Our Course in Miracles continues at 6.30. We are still collecting rain ponchos for REACH, the cold weather shelter. You know, I have the privilege of being able to drive to the store and dash from the car to the store without really getting wet. 
I have the privilege of a nice, warm, safe home with which to keep my belongings dry. And I have the privilege of having the funds if I needed an umbrella or a raincoat. But many people in the community do not have that privilege. So we're hoping to have enough ponchos to cover every, res every person who comes in to reach or who is using the, that facility. So drop them off at my house, 10811 Bower Avenue, sometime before next Monday. And then uh, another way that we can serve is as a bell ringer for the Salvation Army. Haven't you always secretly wanted to stand there, ring the bell, and say Merry Christmas? So we have signed up for Friday and Saturdays after Thanksgiving and up to Christmas from 3 to 5. Two hour sections each, Friday and Saturday. Um, ideally, we'll have a two people on each shift. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's an outside location so we can stay safe. We can stay distant from the um, people going into the store and I invite you to contact me if that sounds like something you'd like to do. I'm planning on doing it. It's going to be fun. Yay! So now we have another song. Yes, we are always in that flow. You know, we've been looking at the flow of, of, of life within us that we are a part of, that is a part of us. For um, a couple weeks now, we talked about the flow of life. We also talked about the flow of wisdom 
And I want to look at one more aspect, because this is all the same flow, one more aspect of um, that flow, and that is the flow of prosperity and substance. You know, prosperity is not just money in the bank. It's not just accumulating things. In fact, that's really the farthest thing from it. But it is cultivating that sense of well-being, knowing that God is your source for whatever you need. In fact, it is a consciousness of the flow that runs through you as you. Eric Butterworth tells us that true prosperity consciousness is consistently open to the flow, attracts opportunities both to give and receive, wisely directs the use of substance, and remains free from its burden. So I want to take a look at these four aspects of a prosperity consciousness. Let's look at the first one, consistently open to the flow. You know, in our self-awareness class on Fridays, we've been reading Gay Hendricks' book, Conscious Living. Well, conscious living is really another name for being in the flow. And Hendricks gives some great advice on how to live consciously or mindfully. The number one thing of conscious living may surprise you. It's to feel your feelings. When we don't allow those feelings to pass through us, if we stuff them, if we ignore them, if we resist them, then we are blocking that flow. Hendricks writes, always and in every moment, embrace what is real inside yourself. Embrace all your feelings, pleasant, unpleasant and neutral, and realize that all of them occur in the larger space of your essence, who you truly are. It reminds me of that poem by Rumi, this being human is a guest house, and we welcome who comes to visit, the feelings that come to visit. So we know that our feelings have a beginning, a middle, and an end, so we allow them to go through, we accept them to go through. And underneath those feelings is the reality of who we are, the true self, the free self, the higher self, the Christ consciousness. Here's what Hendricks has to say. Through your essence, you are connected to the same space that everything in the universe rests in. When you let your feelings be free to come and go, when you stop resisting them or clinging to them, you rest in your permanent home. A clear and unwavering perspective from which to take actions that benefit yourself and others. So feel your feelings. It's not about detachment. It's a celebration of being human by opening our hearts to all of life without attachment, clinging to none of it. We are participating in life fully. It's not about becoming stoic, suppressing the emotions, not feeling anything. It's about learning all of life has a lesson. Everything contains the wholeness. The divine nature of the universe is there for us to listen, to look, to, to see, even in those aspects of life that may seem mundane. So in order for us to be consistently open to this flow, to have this prosperity consciousness, we must feel our, hum our human feelings fully. Our second aspect of the true prosperity consciousness is that it attracts opportunities to give and receive. Yes, we don't have to go looking for opportunities. We are in the flow of giving and receiving. You know, the Dead Sea is a salt lake that's approximately 1,400 feet below sea level. This is the Earth's lowest elevation on land. It is 34% salt. 
imagine that. That's 10 times saltier than the ocean. So uh, I kind of like the idea of floating in it because that would be no problem for anyone, I think. But this salinity makes a very harsh environment for animals and for uh, plants. And that's where it gets its name, the Dead Sea. It also retains water. It, there is no outflow, which helps it to accumulate the salt. And we, if we block the flow of good in our own lives, if we have no outflow, if we are only looking to receive, we'll soon become stagnant as well. So we attract opportunities to give and receive by being open, by following our heart. You know, there's a law of giving and receiving. I'm sure you've heard of this. As you give, you shall receive. As you give. You know, the scriptures say that God loves a cheerful giver. I think this points to the fact that we, we learn to give divinely, generously, without strings attached, so that we can receive abundantly. Our giving is reflected in our receiving. The law works. When one gives from spirit, one may be assured of always having plenty from which to give. So there doesn't have to be any anxiety involved in receiving when we are uh, having the spiritual consciousness of giving, giving cheerfully, knowing that God is our source, God within us. We are giving from an inexhaustible store. We are also, as we give, increasing the channel, the capacity to receive. Our capacity to receive is, is what keeps us from receiving abundantly. In other words, if we have the idea that we're only worth so much, then that is going to block what is coming to us. So give divinely and receive abundantly. Our next um, part of this quote is to wisely direct the use of substance. Wisely direct the use of substance. And just as a refresher, substance is that underlying reality that we can form with our thoughts and our feelings. With focus, with intention, we can form this substance. The revealing word says that our thoughts are the formulating process of mind, the forming part of mind. And that's how we establish power in our consciousness. We, and that's how we really build our world. So we form our world through our thoughts and feelings, through our thought, and through our thoughts mold substance. We form it. So we can turn away, or we can put an illusion, uh, an illusion of a block to the flow. Or we can allow an awareness of its unceasing passage in our lives through our thought, thoughts. So wisely directing the use of substance, then, is to use it not for, you know, egoic ends or... Um, selfish ends, but for the highest and best good. The last as aspect of uh, this prosperity consciousness that Butterworth has said is to remain free of its burden. Now, you may be thinking that, you know, what's the burden in prosperity? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Are you concerned at all about your 401k, the cost of living? Are you, are you worried about real estate values dropping? Your money market account? If you're worried about the money that you have, or if you're fearful about money you don't have, you are out of the flow. This prosperity has become a burden for you. You know, the amazing thing is about pro this prosperity consciousness is we don't have to do any work in order to reap the rewards. The flow of life is the reality of life, the reality of prosperity. 
I want you to consider the word currency for a moment. Currency as in coins, that's how we use it now. But for in the 1600s, it really meant the condition of flowing. Money is meant to circulate for goods and services. Butterworth tells us that when we get into that consciousness of the flow, of the creative process within us, there is always an inner direction in our lives leading to a, a deep sense of meaning. And it flows forth and it leads to the cars and the, in the, in the houses and the money and whatever, but with none of them becoming the goal. All of them just being part of that joyous experience of being in the flow. So as we seek the kingdom of God within, as we become aware of our essence, our, what is be beneath the feelings, you know, we have feelings, but we are not the feelings. As we become aware of who we truly are and allow our actions to be guided from this flow, this place, of uh, consciousness within us, we realize we make real prosperity. We realize who we are at our core. You are not created outside the universe. You are an integral part of it, a dynamic center within it. The allness of universal substance is forever moving into and through the eachness that you are. It is not just that you inherit it, you are its expression. The free flow of substance within you is the continuation of the divine effort that made you in the first place. Isn't that a remarkable quote from Eric Butterworth? So how do we get to the place where we recognize this on a more regular basis, that we're not outside the universe, that we are a part of it, we are the center of it, that all of you universal substance is moving in and through each of us, that we are an expression of God. How do we get to that point? Well, as I said earlier in this lesson, it really begins with self-awareness. Feel your feelings. Deepak Chopra says that self-awareness is the key to a spiritual path. And Hendricks tells us your inner life must be fed and nurtured as much as your physical body. So we allow those feelings to pass through. It, in, in doing so, it allows us to be our true authentic self. Now notice I did not say react from your feelings, but giving yourself time to feel what you're feeling and to process that also gives your t yourself time to respond or not. Have you ever felt like crying and really just didn't want to? Feelings are somewhat uncontrollable. You probably ended up doing some sort of ugly, well, if it was me, I don't know about you, doing some sort of ugly half sob. When I resist that feeling, if I don't accept it, I spend so much energy and time in that resistance. Had I just accepted, embraced that feeling in the moment, it would have been long gone. So we relax into it. And as we do so, we open to possibilities. As we do so, we open to the understanding that everyone has feelings. We're all made of the same stuff. And everyone has feelings and everyone is a part of God. When we go deeply enough into who we are, Hendricks says, and who others are, we will find our organic connection with divinity and theirs. When our condition is, is cleared away, what remains at the core is the divine essence of the universe floating within us. Go inward to taste the divine. So processing our feelings leads to guidance, to authentic action. When we accept what we're feeling, it puts us into harmony 
with ourselves. And it acts as a springboard, Hendricks tells us, to useful action. You want to be of service to this world? Feel your feelings. Remember, you are part of the never-ending flow of love, life, truth, prosperity, and wisdom. And because you live within the allness of divine mind, you are always in this flow. There is never a limit to the flow. I invite you to affirm with me once, maybe twice. I'm in the flow, and every day I expect new things to happen that will open the way to success. I am in the flow, and every day I expect new things to happen that will open the way to success. I put my whole self into everything that I do and pour myself out as a blessing wherever I go. We're going to move into a time of meditation. So wherever you are, I invite you to get a little bit more comfortable adjusting your position as necessary. Closing your eyes or softly gazing on the floor in front of you. And let's take a nice deep breath and exhale. And as we continue to breathe deeply, imagine all the stress leaving on the exhale, all the doubt, all the worry, all the fear, everything that may have been built up for the past couple of weeks, from the news, or families, or unresolved issues from the past. Just let it go for now. And focusing on your heart, imagine this flow of energy, of love, of prosperity, of wisdom, of life flowing through you. It may feel warm. It may not have any temperature at all. Just opening to this flow and recognizing that the source for this flow is within you. God is the source. God is at the center of your being, just as you are at the center of God. As we move into a time of silence, if you find your thoughts drifting, or if you'd like to use an affirmation to continue to go deeper, I invite you to use simply, I am in the flow, and I pour myself out as a blessing wherever I go. I am in the flow and I pour myself out as a blessing wherever I go. In the silence. In the silence. In the silence.
as our time for meditation draws to a close. Let us rejoice in this time together. Let us rejoice in the flow never ending within us. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. So I invite you to join me in our offertory prayer. Together, joyfully I give from the abundance of divine supply that is manifest through me. I am a spiritual being living in a spiritual world under spiritual law and I am prosperous. I am grateful for every blessing in my life. Thank you, God. And if you uh, care to support this ministry, first of all, I thank you for your generous support. And secondly, uh, you may do so by going to PayPal and searching Unity Hagerstown or going, uh, dropping a check off in the mail and the address and actually a donate button is at unityhagerstown.org. So we have another song. It's another easy one. And before we move uh, forward, I want to just say the next four weeks we'll have Brent and Patty here for music. So if you were having trouble on Zoom or Facebook with hearing the music, it should be much easier for the next four weeks during Advent. No, I'm sorry, they're not here next Sunday, but during Advent they will be here. So let's have another song.
So did you notice these last couple songs really had a flow to them, kind of keeping in with our theme of being in the flow? Mm -hmm. I invite you to share your celebrations on the comment screen if you're watching on Facebook. Um, and join us after the service on Zoom. I'd love to sit and chat with you for a bit. And let's go ahead and pray a prayer of blessing the offering and giving gratitude for all of those many celebrations. So centering ourselves once more with a breath allowing our hearts to expand and knowing that there is more than enough and that we are more than enough. We give thanks for the offerings, the tithes, the blessings of this community, and we dedicate all that's been received to the work of this ministry helping people to become empowered, to know the beautiful spiritual expression that they are, to know that they are always in the flow. We give thanks for the many blessings in our lives. We give thanks for this community. And so it is. Amen and amen. And now we have our closing song. We're not doing the peace song today. Well, we're doing a different peace song today, um, only because I don't have good music for the peace song um, yet. It's on the way, I'm sure. Additionally, a thought occurred to me, and I think I'm gonna do this from now on. Instead of this PowerPoint in which it's so difficult to read everything, I'm going to send a PDF out with the words, the affirmations used in our weekly email. Um, so if you're not part of that, if you're not receiving that, so go to our webpage and sign up for it. That way you'll have the words, the lyrics, You'll have the affirmations for the daily word in our opening statement. You'll have the announcements all in one convenient PDF that you can print or not. We can uh, possibly share it on the Zoom. I'm not sure about Facebook, um, but we'll see. If you know how to do that, let me know, other than copy and paste. So here is our closing song. It's been a joy to spend this time with you.
Let's join together in the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, my friends. Join us on Zoom. We'll be there for a few minutes. <laughs> I'll be right with you.